Hi everyone, welcome back to the Rugby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing my 2024 Parramatta Eels season preview. The club missed the finals by two competition points in 2023 and it kind of went on a bit of a trend where when Parramatta do have a big season, they feel the back it up the next year. And of course you had sections of the media and people on social media go on and on about Oh, Parramatta missed the finals after making the grand final the year previous, like it's the first time any team in rugby league history has failed to do so. Canterbury and West Tigers both won the premiership and failed to make the finals the following year, but nobody mentions that. But anyway, enough about that, let's get into the preview. So, looking at the draw for 2024, um, it starts off in round one with a match against our arch rivals, Canterbury Bankstown. I think it's imperative that we win that opening game there at the Western Sydney Stadium. It will be a tricky game though because Canterbury will be desperate to start their year off in good fashion and they've added a few signs so they're going to be a bit of an unknown quantity going into that round one match. And then in the next three fixtures, Penrith away, the three times in a row, grand final winners, not an easy task whatsoever. Then Manly at home, who once again, another tricky match. They're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm not really sure where I put Manly this year. And with West Tigers as well, another team desperate to improve in 2024, but we play them at home. In the next month of rugby, we play Canberra away. Not easy once again. Then we got North Queensland and Redcliffe at home, which I'd rather play them at home than away. And then once again, we play against Manly out at Brookvale Oval. And then we have our first bye of the year. We had to wait, I think, until round 13 last year. We were the last team to get a bye, so at least we get a bye slightly earlier this season. And then after the first bye, we do have a few tough games. We've got Brisbane at home, Melbourne away, and South at the Olympic Stadium there. And then following on from that, Cronulla at home, uh, Canterbury at the Olympic Stadium again, and then Eastern Suburbs at home. So some tricky games there, but I think that we could probably win about three of them matches. And then we have another bye. Now, I think with the buys in 2024, we've actually got some pretty generous ones because in round 16, we have a bye. And then round 20, we have a bye. So we've only got three matches in between them two. So the players do get a bit of a rest there in say four to five weeks but then just like last year the run home is quite a difficult one because after that bye we play Melbourne at home New Zealand away tough place to go Penrith at home Eastern Suburbs away and then Brisbane away uh, so a very tough five weeks of rugby and then we finish the year with some rel relatively and I see that with quotation marks easy matches against St George and West Tigers to close out the year so all in all, it's a tough draw, especially towards the back end of the year and um, at certain parts in the middle, but I think it's a slightly better draw than what we got last year. Now, as the recording of this video in early February, we've only signed two players for 2024. The first one is Kelma Tuolangi from Manly. And then the second one is also another Manly player in Morgan Harper. Now, if you watch me predicted line up i have two alongy in the start in 17 but with morgan harper i just have a feeling that brad arthur will go with bailey simonson and morgan harper will start the year in the new south wales cup looking at some of the players that we've moved on uh, one of them's jack Murchie. i thought he did okay when he were at new zealand but he never really fired for us they were a bit of a flop signing so he goes to huddersfield another strange signing that we made who also left the club and retired with Josh Hodgson. If you watch me 2023 preview video, I said that he probably won't even last the year or he might not even get to play one match for the club. And the other player that also was released were Wonga Blake. Now, when he was leaving Parramatta, I was cheering and I'm going, yes, how oh yeah, he's gone. But then he ends up signing for the club I support in England, St. Ellen, so I just can't win, can I? But I mean, he had his moments, Wonga Blake, very rocks and diamonds like he was before at Penrith. I don't really know why we signed him, but uh, yeah, he did have his moments, but I am glad to see him moved on. And the other two players that are no longer at the club are Andrew Davey, once again, another strange signing. Don't know why we signed him. 
He retired and Samuel Loizu went to West Tigers on a trade and trial deal. I believe he only played just the one match rules which were against Penrith two years ago. I think one of the only real talking points with the starting 17 this year is that Brad Arthur has said I'm only going to go with one hooker, an 80 minute hooker and uh, obviously the two ones that we've got are Brendan Hans and Joey Lusick. I personally think if you watch me preview predicted lineup video that he's going to go with Lusick because throughout 2023 even though Hans were doing okay he was starting Hans on the bench and having Hodgson there and he only really started to play hands when Hodgson went down injured and there was no other option. But I just have a feeling because Lusick is more experienced, Arthur will pick Lusick as the 80 minute hooker to start the year. But I wouldn't be surprised if at some stage in the season that Brad Arthur brings hands back under the line open. We've got two hookers in the starting 17. So going into this year, the squad hasn't really changed that much the same as last year. Last season, one thing that a lot of people gloss over is that we had a lot of close losses. I think the first three losses of the year were by four points or less. And up until the back end of the year, our biggest loss were by 10 points. So we're, we're in a lot of matches. And if you maybe look at the flip side and you go, well, if Parramatta win those matches and they make the top eight comfortably. So um, going into this year, it's, it's a matter of just owning the big moments knowing what to do at the right time and um, just executing the game plan c correctly because there's a couple of times last year where we should have won matches but we shot ourselves in the foot a bit. One thing of concern though is the lack of depth in the backs because we were light on the backs last year and this year we're going to be even more light because I know that he probably wouldn't have got many games but Arthur Miller-Steven, he had a season-ending injury at training. Also, Richard Penasini, who I think's another back. Um, he was coming through the ranks. I think he might have got a start this year. He suffered an ACL injury for, at training, so he'll be out for the entire year. And outside of the, the start in 17, if someone was to get injured, see in the centres, we don't really have too many replacements. You've got Morgan Harper there. I believe Zach Sini, who used to play for the West Tigers, is in the top 30 or just outside there. And you've also got, I think, Deja Nassi. And besides that, there's not really too many other players that could fill in that gap. Or what happens if, say, Clint Gutherson gets injured or one of the wingers? Um, we're very light on the wingers as well. We've only got really Sean Russell and Micah Civil. And outside of that, we've got Hayes Dunster, who has had a few injuries over the last couple of years. So I were hoping that the club would recruit a few backs going into 2024, but that doesn't seem to be the case, but in terms of the rest of the squad, the halves are fine, the spine itself is fine, and we've got plenty of forwards. We've got so many forwards we don't know what to do with them, so there's no issue there. It's just the outside backs. I think that's a real problem, and there's been a few people that have highlighted that issue at the club. So going into 2024, I remain slightly optimistic, but I think at best, this club could probably finish between 5th to 8th on the table. I think that at their very best, Parramatta can still be at the finals. They do have a finals team. At worst though, I think it could be another year like last year. I think we could finish 10th or below that, maybe even low as maybe 12th or 14th, worst case scenario. But I don't think that we're a top four team, but we're still definitely got a side that can make the finals and compete with some of the teams but I think when it comes to the likes of Melbourne, Brisbane, Penrith etc they're different gravy they're a class above at the moment so we're not as good as these and hopefully in 2024 we can turn Western Sydney Stadium back into a fortress again and hopefully the fans turn out on big numbers like they do every year we've got the most members out of any Sydney club even more than South now and our attendance figures are good. So, I mean, everything's going right off the field. It's just a case of the club putting in the performances on the field. So that is me unbiased preview of Parramatta's 2024 NRL season. Let me know in the comment section below where you think Parramatta will finish and who their best players will be or someone 
that you think might be the most improved player in 2024. Thanks to everyone that has recently watched my videos and has been supporting me recently, subscribing, and thanks to everyone that's been subscribing me since the beginning. It's much appreciated. But anyways, this has been Ruby League History. I'll be doing some more videos coming up in the next week or so, so stay tuned for those. But anyways, tatty bye for now.